jumping off the cliff, gotta take a trip. Slow ride when I'm off the shit. Buckle in, kid. What up, YouTube? Hey, uh, the last video, we finished installing that Mishimoto radiator fan shroud, the radiator itself, and that racing thermostat. All good. You saw me bleed it. Well, you heard me instruct to you how to properly bleed the system so that way you had no issues. And uh, tonight or this evening or this evening or tonight, whatever it might be, um, I'm going to go ahead and knock out this oil cooler. I already drained the oil out of the car and removed the... Removed the... I just had a brain fart. I drained the oil. I just finished draining the oil from the vehicle and removed the oil filter. I went ahead and I picked me up one of these high speed uh, K&N performance oil filters. Uh, some more mobile one and we're going to knock this oil cooler out. I know you guys are waiting to see this install or at least a step by step method on how to properly install this oil cooler. It's really easy. It's not uh, overly complicated and it shouldn't take us no more than maybe an hour at the most. So like I always say, let's get hot. Got all the screws and fittings. Another box. And oh, this is nice. Sandwich plate. Our thermostatic oil sandwich plate. I don't want to lose these. Do our screws. Our stainless steel sandwich plate adapter. Our T fitting. And some more screws. Voila, there's one. Tell you one thing, this is packaged extremely well. Extremely well. This is here. And our bracket. Oh, these are 90 degree fittings. So earlier I said these are T fittings, but they're 90 degree fittings. Nice little mission mode on them at the end. Oil cooler itself. Yo, what up, YouTube? Hey, uh, so today, um, 
we're going to be doing uh, the oil cooler finally. Uh, it shouldn't take long. I already kind of got the car prepped, as you can see behind me. Uh, it's on the stands or the ramp. Um, all I got to do is take off the oil filter, uh, mount up the brackets, place the cooler in place, hook up the nuts and bolts, run the hoses, whatnot. And then we should be cooking with Crisco. But um, I know it's been a, a little bit since I probably know almost two weeks I think since the last video but uh just to keep it uh you know they've been having us on lockdown out here I don't want to say necessarily lockdown but I think everybody is because of this virus so for you guys out there stay safe and uh I just uh okay I do my best to keep the content coming all right so uh I would have had this done a lot sooner but I had a hiccup the hiccup was the oil cooler came and the bracket that came with it was not the incorrect bracket. Started the video a couple weeks ago and I realized that the bracket wasn't the same after I tried to line it up and the holes wasn't lining up, obviously. And <clears throat> when I checked the box, it said 370Z. So for you guys that have a 370Z or a uh, G37, this is the bracket that you will need right here. Or there he goes. That's the bracket that you guys will get. Okay. Now I kept it for two reasons. One, I think my interest has been piqued to do a G37 uh, IPL front bumper conversion. Um, so the rear is going to look like a G35, obviously, and the front is going to be a G37. So I'm in the midst of collecting all the information necessary to get ready to do that. Uh, and then once I get started, I mean, you guys will be here for the for the trip with me. So uh, I know when I do that, I'm gonna have to use the bracket. So for the time being, I'm gonna put the oil cooler in with the correct bracket. I, I, uh, I reached out to Mishimoto. I reached out to Mishimoto, they squared me away. Uh, I got a new bracket that fits the G35. So for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and install that bracket. And then I'm going to go ahead and when I do the uh, front end conversion, then I just switch brackets out. It's going to be that simple. All right. So I don't want to hold anybody up too much longer. So let's get hot. And today is a gorgeous freaking day. Holy crap. gorgeous day and i brought old sasha out me and sasha gonna go get some wheel time in for a little bit all right maintain that social distance you know what i mean anyway so here's the one the old bracket like i showed you a minute ago so we're just gonna put this one in storage Here's a new one. Double check your labels. 350Z. That's the one you want for you 350Z G35 owners. That is the correct label right there. And here is the correct bracket for you 350Z G35 owners like myself. All right, so now that we got that out the way, let's go and get this bad boy installed. Okay, so right here is where we drain our oil. All right, I've already loosened it, so I'm just gonna, or haven't loosened it. You will need to top your oil off after this. All right, not all of it's gonna drain out of there, but a good amount is. So make sure you go get yourself some uh, new oil. That's about done. Another thing you wanna do 
uh, prior to the installation, um, you're gonna have to raise your radiator a little bit to get into this under panel. The reason being is these screws, or these holes that are already in your radiator uh, mount, um, right here where you see my finger, these are where the screws are gonna go to mount the oil cooler bracket. So you're gonna have to loosen it up from the top and then come down here, pick the radiator up and let it sit on the actual radiator support right here or my i don't know if you guys can see it but you might see how i have it right there sitting and then after everything's all said and done you can go ahead and place it back another thing you're gonna have to do prior to installation is there is a bracket that normally holds this in place this holds right here just like that and then there's another metal bracket that normally screws into right here let me go get it so i can show you so this bracket right here would normally go right here, just like so, and then bolt into the car right there. Just like that, it would go in here just like this. But this part is bumping into the oil cooler. So what I'm... Never leave home without it. government work just like that All right, so I got the bracket in. So in order to get this bracket in, for anybody else who's gonna do, you're gonna have to lift the radiator from the radiator support a little bit so that way you can get those screws because there are screws that go back here, all right? There are screws that go back here. It's how it bolts on. Now that we got the bracket on, I went ahead. You're gonna also have this. If it's a G35, you're gonna have this cabling right here. I'm gonna move this cabling behind my crash bar and I'm gonna zip tie it to the crash bar just like so, so you don't see it. You see it? Now you don't. You see it? <laughs> now you don't. So that'll go there. The next step, you had this bracket that you saw me cut earlier. I went ahead and I cut the bracket with the intention of putting the bracket on to hold this part in uh, in place, but as it, as it turns out that when I put the oil cooler itself in or on to the bracket, I have to move it a little forward so it will fit the way it's intended to, right? Now, I know a lot of you in the comments are going to notice that the M on this uh, oil cooler is upside down. It is upside down. Why is it upside down? Just another G. Well, I don't know. You should be fucked up. But it's all good because if you don't want to see it, you have two options, maybe three. So this is your option one. F it. You you know it's by Mishimoto. Put it or install it just like so, how it's intended to. Or go ahead and turn it around and install it backwards. Or leave it upright and install it just like so. The screws will hold it together and you will be just fine. The only difference when you start running your hoses, your hoses are going to be ran from the top. To be honest, I think I'm going to be a little more comfortable running my hoses from the top 
simply because I don't have a the the plastic housing that goes in the bottom of my G35 way back when um, had an oil change by an Infinity dealership uh, out west and they didn't put it on correctly and I drove off the lot and if you can see right here it got tore off on the highway so uh, later on I will be replacing that with one of those aluminum shrouds or uh, housing or uh, underbelly pans I think Z1 sells it so I might go with them but yeah it's, I'm gonna zip tie this cable like I said earlier to here and then I might just install it just like this and have my cabling go for the top so let's go ahead and uh, do you know what no nah, I'm gonna do this I want this thing secure it doesn't bother me any so I'm gonna put it upside down you know why because I do what I want Just like that. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is knock out my bolts. I'm just getting all my screws started. Zip ties for the win. Is your car broken? Hmm? Are you just doing this to record? Are you just leaving this? Why under? are you talking? Hmm? Why are you talking? I don't know. Hey, you know the cameraman doesn't talk. You ever hear the cameraman on YouTube talk? Ah, I saw this YouTube video. No, nope. the cameraman, cameraman does not talk. There was a cameraman. There, the cameraman don't talk. Mm -hmm. Nope. There was one. There are no cameraman don't talk. Uh -huh. I didn't. Do I pay you to talk? No. Okay. I'll pay you to do what? What did I pay you to do? To film. Okay. So now we're going to get our banjos ready. So what you want to do with these is put a little bit of Teflon tape around the threads because I don't want any oil to come out of my thermostatic sandwich plate. It's righty tighty lefty loosey. So if I'm going to loose tighten up my banjos into my... Uh, thermostatic sandwich plate I want to put the tape on in a manner that's not going to come uh, unraveled so I want to put it in the same manner that I'm going to twist just like that how this installs, I have my seal, I have the front, this is the part of your sandwich plate that you're going to see when you place your oil filter. So we're going to put our banjo fittings on. Oh, we'll get some Teflon tape on this end too. Oh shoot. I mean, oh shoot. You tell me to put stuff on. I thought you already knew. Thank you. 
That's too good. Daddy, why don't you use the stool for this? Yeah. To hold the camera. What's that? The stool. Why you don't use the stool? Yeah. Why have you? You said hmm? you wanted help. Yeah. You heard me? I thought I was done since when I said that. <coughs> Next best thing. Okay. Channel locks. Can you see it in the camera? Mm -hmm. yeah. Thermostat complete. Now, if you got an oil cooler temperature gauge, this is already tapped in there and there's already a bolt in it. But you can unhook this and tie in your oil cooler temperature gauge and that'll tell you the temperature or the pressure of your oil. Next is we're going to go ahead and slide this adapter on. All right, we're going to get ready to install the thermostatic um, sandwich plate. Place the sandwich plate on first. Make sure your banjo fittings are face, facing out this direction. All right, on the adapter, you're going to place some uh, some Loctite or thread locker, all right? Because it's the last thing you want when driving down the hallway is for this to rattle off. Any oil to go spewing everywhere. All right, you can find that out all the zone, Amazon. I'm sure you guys watching this video know what thread locker is. We're gonna slide our bolt on our adapter onto our sandwich plate. Well, actually, we know the longest one's gonna go to the outside, so 
I'll start just to keep things out of the way. Right here. See this one went out, no problem. Alright, we're not gonna tighten these all the way up. We're gonna leave them loose so they can move around a little bit and then we're gonna go over to the banjo fittings and knock those out. I'm gonna go ahead and feed your tubing right through this plastic paneling that ends up right where you need it to be. Both fittings are in place, they're torqued down, that's nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and reapply my oil oh, yeah. filter. So, install is complete, cooler, zip ties all the way across, all the way inside the panel, I don't know if you guys can see that, all the way, <sighs> to the sample plate, done and done. All right, so everything's running pretty normal. Uh, no leaks. I checked on my fittings just to make sure. Um, I don't have anything going on that shouldn't be going on. And no leaks at the bottom of the car. That'll wrap up this video uh, for the Mishimoto oil cooler install. Um, you gotta thank my little cameramen that were helping me. I had some guest cameramen. So uh, applaud them for a job well done. Um, <laughs> the install was, it's its not a hard install. You just have to make a few adjustments for your G35 owners. Um, after the adjustments, everything is pretty much plug and play. Uh, just remember the options you have to either put the oil cooler upside down, backwards, or you can flip it upside to where the hoses are coming from the top. I chose for mine to come to the bottom. So that way I would have the ability to zip tie that one cable to the oil cooler itself which is good um and it worked out for the most part uh <clears throat> i also made sure i secured everything i think the next uh install i'm going to do is something not so much for performance but after looking from under the car and installing the oil cooler i really don't want anything to kind of come in contact with it and like i said earlier about my plastic shroud that used to be there to protect all the under bits i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can grab up one of those uh i think it's called the z speed uh aluminum under shroud something something like that that way i can have a little more protection under there we'll see what's next after that and then uh we'll just keep moving um i still have the pulleys to install i still have no idea how i'm gonna get them off um everybody makes it seem like it's so easy and i thought it was gonna be easy and it's it's kind of tough at least by yourself
It's probably why it's tough because it's by myself. So what I might do is when I take the car to go up to get cammed <clears throat> and I get the uh, the new clutch of flywheel, I'll probably have them just knock out the police and see how much of a I can get into a video. All right, so it's it's coming along pretty well, I think. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Just remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, please, if you subscribe, don't forget to smash that notification button so that way you can get my videos as soon as they pop up and they're readily available. All right, so this is Justin of the G, and you guys stay safe out there. Wash your hands. It's hard out there in the streets. Wash your hands.